Stay tuned because Good Sports is coming up next. Kansas City Sports and Fitness is the magazine for sports fans in KC. Inside, we cover local sports and local teams from pro to peewee and everything in between. And this month's free copy of Kansas City Sports and Fitness includes the Surplus Exchange College Sports Report. You'll find Kansas City Sports and Fitness all over KC at places like the Kansas City Ice Center. And it's free, so pick one up today. Welcome to Good Sports, the Kansas City Sports and Fitness Magazine Show. Good Sports is presented by Kansas City Chiropractic. Dr. Lynn McIntosh and Kansas City Chiropractic offer the care that can relieve pain and stress and improve overall health. For an appointment, call them at 816-753-4600 or visit kansascitychiropractic.com. And by the Surplus Exchange. Take a tax donation credit plus help KC students when you recycle your electronics and office furniture at the Surplus Exchange. For more information, visit surplusexchange.org or call 816-472-0444. Good Sports was recorded live on Saturday, December 14th. Welcome to Good Sports, the Kansas City Sports and Fitness Show. I am Steve Fish, the publisher of Kansas City Sports and Fitness Magazine. Now, this show is being taped at Mafia Pizzeria Southside, located at Metcalf and 127th, where at lunchtime you can enjoy the Mafia meal on the go. You can get a 10-inch one-topping pizza and a 20-ounce Pepsi product for $5.99. You can add a garden salad for just $1.99 and a giant cookie for just $0.99. Cents. Now, this offer is also good at Mafia Mike's Pizza, which is located at 87th and Lackman. Now, before we get started with the show, I want to tell everyone that our current issue of Kansas City Sports and Fitness is available free at over 700 locations in KC. And in our current issue of KC Sports, we feature our Chiefs report presented by Bud Light. This month, we feature a story on Niall Davis, who set a Chiefs record with a 108-yard kickoff return. We also compare this year's team with the 1969 Chiefs, and we look at the playoff possibilities and whether the Chiefs will qualify for a wild card slot. Now, in our hockey report, which is presented by the Kansas City Ice Center, we write about the outdoor ice pavilion, which is open and will be the host site for their Winter Classic tournaments this month. Plus, we feature a special insert called the Winter Sports Guide, which has information on Learn to Skate, on public skating, and on figure skating programs that are available at the Kansas City Ice Center. Now, in our college football report presented by the Surplus Exchange, we talk with Wildcat Will Spradlin, uh, KU basketball freshman phenom Andrew Wiggins, and we write about the success of the MU Tigers football team in the SEC. You can visit our website, kcsportspaper.com, to find a link to a list of locations where you can find KC Sports, and you can actually check out a PDF of the entire issue on our website as well. And now joining us here at Mafia Pizzeria Southside, and it's starting to smell really good because they're putting the pizza out on the buffet, is Bob Akers. He is the executive director of the Surplus Exchange. He's also a youth and high school uh, soccer coach here in Kansas City. Welcome to the show, Bob. Thanks for joining us again here today. Great to be here. You bet. Uh, so let's start off uh, with a little information about the Surplus Exchange. Sure. Um, let's just talk about what your focus and your mission is here in Kansas City and, and, and the good that you guys do for the community. Well, we're an environmental nonprofit with a focus on electronics recycling. And uh, the important part of recycling is refurbishing. So we refurbish as much of the electronics as we get in. Uh, we're actually on pace to possibly boost that several percentage points next year and have more product that we can put back out. When we put it back out, we're aiming towards um, other nonprofits, uh, kids in need, uh, and you know, small startup businesses are, are always folks who can benefit from good refurbished gear that we get in. And you know, A good example is, well, I've watched you fight with your mouse. I've got a, uh, <laughs> I've got a great uh, G5, a Mac, on my desk right now that somebody recycled simply because I think the uh, batteries went out in their mouse and their keyboard. It was a wireless mouse, wireless keyboard. And I think the batteries went out, and they had no idea what was going on, so they just figured the whole thing was shot, and they recycled it. And, oh, wow. Uh, my techs got a hold of it, and the next thing I know, it's in my office. And it's, <laughs> and, and so I was, I was a benefit of that, and I am a nonprofit, so it works. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we're working towards some really exciting programs in the coming year. Um, possibly with City of Roland Park, we'll be doing some door-to-door -door recycling. So we'll, we'll reach out to... Um, really elderly, disabled, and pilot it that way. And then if we can do more as we go along, we'll do more. And you take, so you take this stuff and you either uh, destroy it in a, an efficient and effective way that doesn't harm the environment, 
or you refurbish it and you make it available to others in the community. Right. Uh, I'd like to see that G5 myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Others in the community. I mean, don't you have, and, and we're going to talk about this as well if we have a second. Yeah. Uh, you get all sorts of cool stuff. And don't you have right. a Lisa uh, yeah. there? Yeah. A Macintosh right. Lisa, which preceded the first Mac Plus. Like, right. I looked at it and I went, oh, my gosh. Right. That is just a classic that, you know, that has, has value of some kind well, if, that's if you were to go on the market for it. Right. I, I've had people want to buy that thing. And we, we've tried to say, eh, you know, we're just leaving it here as part of our little wacky museum. Because we've got that. <laughs> we've got a walkie-talkie from, you know, probably uh, as late as the the Vietnam War, but it could be as old as the Korean War. Uh, we've had Russian night vision goggles come through. Just wow. a, just a, uh, a bunch of really odd stuff that people end up in their basement and they need to get rid of. But for us, it's making sure that it doesn't go to landfills anywhere in the world and right. that it, uh, we recover everything that we can from it and uh, you know, put it back into the market. Right. So if people want to come and check out the, the store that you have mm-hmm. there, uh, which includes furniture, and it includes computers and electronics right. and things like that. If they want to come and check out the store, they can look online, or they can uh, also come to your location. Tell us where right. that is. They can come to 518 Santa Fe in the West Bottoms. Uh, they can check us on the web at surplusexchange.org. We're pretty active in social media now, so they can, they can find us on Facebook. Uh, and we're posting things on Facebook all the time, so we're, we're really trying to interact with the community there. Um, Call us, uh, come see us, visit us. Phone uh, number? Is 816-472-0444. Terrific. Um, so let's shift gears, and, and you're wearing your soccer gear here. Um, you know, Aren't I always? Yeah, <laughs> always. You are a, a, a soccer coach for high school kids and, and youth soccer as well, uh, but you have a state champion that lives in your house. I do. Right now. Tell us about the state championship. Which, what level was it? Uh, who, it was, who played against who and, and how the game went? It was uh, Rockhurst against Timberland in the Class 3 final. And to me, it was really exciting just watching this whole thing unfold because, uh, you know, about halfway through the season, I I had thought, yeah, this isn't going to be their year. I think they'll be really good next year. I don't think they're going to make it this year. And I I have a real interest in Rockhurst, not just because my son plays there, but, uh, you know, sitting in the stands with um, a friend of mine who I've coached with for several years, Mark Minders. We were sitting there, and we counted – about eight kids that we have coached wearing Rockhurst uh, oh, uniforms. That's great. And as this thing unfolded and we saw district finals and regionals and, and the other games, uh, in most games we were recognizing kids that we had either coached or we had coached against these kids going back to when they were U10s and U12. So we, we had a real interest in mm-hmm. watching this unfold. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, Rockhurst made it to the final. They played uh, Timberland, which is in Wentzville, uh, outside of St. Louis. Right. And, uh, you know, Rockers got down and they fought back and they ended up uh, really taking a hard-fought, very physical game. Those, uh, those St. Louis kids were big. Really? <laughs> yeah, they were. <laughs> there. And it was, it was interesting because it was a, a, a little bit of change in style, a little contrast in style with Rockers wanting to be more possession-oriented and, um, you know, Timberland wanting to use their size get out in the wings, play long balls and run. So it was, you know, that part of it was interesting. And, and again, from just the coaching aspect, uh, the way Chris Lawson, the coach for Rockers, altered the way he likes to do things. He, he altered his system to fit the players he had. Mm-hmm. And they were, they were actually below 500 after, I think, maybe 16 games really? in the yeah. season. And then they won the last 14 games. He found and the chem- he found the he found the mix that yeah. worked the best he, for he, the, for the team. He yeah. found the system, which is soccer speak for formation. Right. We don't like to use formation because once the the ball's kicked, everybody runs to different <laughs> positions, and it, you got this free flowing thing. But sure. uh, he changed his system, and uh, uh, it worked out great for him. So let's let's talk here. C- congratulations, you've, you you've got that in the house, and that's that's great. That's um, let's talk. This is a big one of the things that you said when you first came in, and we started talking. This is a big week for soccer in yeah. Kansas City. Uh, actually, last couple of weeks with um, Sporting KC winning the MLS uh, championship for their first time, um, and then the additional announcement that just came out a day or so ago that we're going to have a number of different soccer championships here in Kansas City in the upcoming years. From your perspective as a youth soccer coach and having a kid that plays soccer and all that stuff, what does all this mean to the soccer community in Kansas City? 
Well, the the interest is there, and I think Kansas City is being rewarded for for being one of the the most active co- soccer communities in the in the nation. Uh, the Sporting Goods Manufacturing Association ranks Kansas City as the number one uh, soccer community. Hmm. Uh, you know, bringing bringing these types of events in, having Sporting win, uh, having Sporting win with uh, actually a graduate of Rockhurst on their roster and nice. starting. A local guy. Uh, local guy. Yeah. You know, that's you don't see that in professional sports very much. But having that happen, uh, bringing in the NCAA Division One Men's uh, Championship starting in 2015, right. uh, those are all uh, signals that the sport is is now taking a hold. And, you know, I, I told you earlier, I was thinking back to when, you know, when I was a kid and I first started playing, and, you know, I remembered Mr. Van Keppel and Mr. Jackson and parents getting together, and they had to get four by fours and build his goals and you know, scratch <laughs> out some areas for us to play and we couldn't find shoes. It was, it was quite a thing. And now we have, uh, you know, soccer specialty stores in the city. Uh, I think the one thing will, will really hopefully it'll light a fire on getting, getting fields developed because the one thing that we really lack on are the number of fields. We just don't have enough fields to serve all the kids we've got that want to play and all the teams that need to practice. Isn't that amazing that, you know, that with all the fields and how busy they are, we can't, we don't have enough and we don't no. have enough space for all of that. That's, that's terrific that, you know, that people are, you know, are engaging in that and, and need the space and keeping their kids active. And, you know, whether they go at a high level or not, it really doesn't matter. It's well, just, no, it's, it's develop, you know, it's, it's getting people out and getting them, you know, some, some alternative lifestyles, getting them to play, uh, you know, one of the big movements, and, and we've done it here in Kansas City really well with, you know, one, a project I was involved with for years, the Brookside Soccer Club. Mm-hmm. Uh, inner city soccer, urban soccer, you know, if we can keep uh, doing that, you know, those, those fields that over, over at Swope now have been developed to the point where they hosted the Big 12 Women's Championships there. They'll be hosting or they'll be taking part in the uh, NCAA Championships and that went from some really ugly fields when I first started coaching over there. I mean, that was that was Ankle Break Park. You know, <laughs> it was it was not good. And uh, you know, a lot of times when we were out there at six in the morning lining those fields on a Saturday, you you had some really large deer that didn't want you to be there. So uh-huh. there were, there was there were, you know, there's a lot of hurdles that have been jumped. But if we can do the same thing in Kansas City, Kansas, and some of the other communities, and and get our hands on some of the uh, grant money that's available for urban soccer uh i think it'd be great if kck could jump in there and and get uh you know six or eight fields developed in their their neighborhoods and make that available to their youth because you know right right, right now we've we've got it over here in, in Irvine park we've got it in in kc mo but we still have the, you know kids up north we have kids in kck we have kids in the northeast that have to travel a long way uh, to get a chance to play the, this game on decent fields with with good coaches and against good competition, that's how you develop them. So Bob and I are looking for individuals that can help us fund <laughs> <laughs> a, a soccer field, and uh, he he has the know how to to and the connections to make it happen, and and uh, we'll figure it out from there. Uh, we've got about a minute or so here, but uh, if you know. It w- if there's and this I may not should probably shouldn't bring this up, but uh, you know one of the things that I, I'm more of a pure uh, type of thing in the than the whole the whole penalty kick ish mm-hmm. t- you know thing that determined the championship was not an ideal thing. I mean it, you know I'm a hockey fan as people know and they they have that too. They have the you know the shootouts that determine a win. Right. And and most people in hockey really don't appreciate that. They kind of say okay it's 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 a skill competition that determines who gets the extra point. They don't do that when it gets into the championships. They play 5 hours if it, that's what it takes. Um you know, is there anything that you'd change in the game? And like I said, we're we're almost out of time here, so so I'm putting you on the yeah. spot, and I apologize for that. No, I I'd, I'd like to see him play on. Really, I'd I'd like to see it play on and uh, not turn it into you know a guessing game. And you get some of the gamesmanship going on, and, and the purity of the game sort of disappears when you get into the the penalty shootout. Uh, you know, on some level, it's it's really exciting, and mm-hmm. and I was diving out of my chair along with all the oh, other sure. soccer fans. Oh sure. But it's great know, for the fans. I'd I'd rather see it uh, settled with, uh, you know, well played, hard fought eleven against eleven out on the open field, and and see how that goes. 
Absolutely, and that could, they could still be playing. Now. They, they <laughs> could. The way that game was going. <laughs> yeah, they could still be playing. Well, Bob, thank you for joining us here. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. You're watching or listening to Good Sports, Kansas City Sports and Fitness Magazine show. We're coming to you from Mafia Pizzeria, Southside, located at 127th and Metcalf in Overland Park. Go online and watch Good Sports, the Kansas City Sports Magazine television show. It's available on the Good Sports KC YouTube channel and features local interviews with local athletes and experts covering sports, health, and exercise topics of importance to KC fans. And be sure to pick up your copy of the new KC Sports and Fitness Magazine featuring the Bud Light Chiefs Report, the Surplus Exchange College Sports Report, the Cargo Largo Health and Fitness Report, and the KC Ice Center Hockey Report. KC Sports Magazine is always free, so pick one up today. These days we're all so busy, and many of us ignore our health and let stress turn into chronic pain. Dr. Lynn McIntosh of Kansas City Chiropractic can provide you with the proper care to relieve pain and stress, improve your health, and get more out of life. And right now get a free deep tissue laser treatment with your initial visit. Just mention KC Sports when you make an appointment. For more information on Dr. McIntosh and Kansas City Chiropractic, call 816-753-4600 or visit kansascitychiropractic.com. With the current trend to live a greener lifestyle, many people and businesses now recycle their electronics. At the Surplus Exchange, your e-waste will never go to a landfill or incinerator, nor will we allow e-waste to be shipped overseas. Some companies employ this tactic and end up polluting other countries with our waste. All materials are safely tracked, destroyed, or reclaimed right here in the U.S. The Surplus Exchange is Kansas City's link between industry, charity, and the environment. To find out more, visit surplusexchange.org. The Outdoor Ice Pavilion at the Kansas City Ice Center is now open. Come out to a public skating session on the Outdoor Ice Pavilion or on their indoor rink. And sign up now for Learn to Skate and Learn to Play Hockey classes at the Kansas City Ice Center. The KC Ice Center is located two miles west of 435 on Johnson Drive. For more information on public skating times or to register for a camp or class, visit kcicenter.com or call 913-441-3033. That's 913-441-3033. One of the world's top golf club fitters is right here in Kansas City. Golf MD in Lenexa has been helping KC golfers for over 15 years by offering expert service at discount prices. Visit Golf MD for all your club repairs. They do regripping, reshafting, and line loft and shaft frequency analysis. Plus, Golf MD can fit you in your existing clubs or create custom clubs for you too. And Golf MD also offers computerized swing analysis and launch monitor testing. Visit golf-md.com or call 913-663-5050. Mafia's Meal on the Go is a great lunchtime choice. Get a 10-inch one-topping pizza and a 20-ounce drink from Mafia Mike's at 87th and Lackman and Mafia Pizzeria Southside at 127th and Metcalf. Great pizza and a great offer you can't refuse. Eagles Landing Golf Course is the place to play golf in the Southland and is by far the best golf value around. Visit EaglesLandingGolfCourse.com and for tee times, call 816-318-0004 and make the drive to see why Eagles Landing is the best golf value in KC. Be sure to check out the Kansas City Ice Center Winter Sports Guide inside December's Kansas City Sports and Fitness Magazine. You'll find KC Sports Magazine at over 700 locations across Kansas City. And you can check out the issue online at kcsportspaper.com. The Army Reserve has more than 120 unique career opportunities so you can add to your current strengths or build brand new ones. Join the Army Reserve and you'll make a difference in your life and the lives of others. Learn more at GoArmy.com slash reserve. For more information, contact the Greater Kansas City Company at 3720 Arrowhead Drive, Suite B. Telephone number 816-531-3818. There's Strong, and then there's Army Strong. Paid for by the U.S. Army. Experience a touch of the Ozarks when you tee off at Winterstone Golf Course in Independence. Visit winterstonegolf.com for daily specials and call 816-257-5755 for lessons or information on tournament hosting. Welcome back to Good Sports, Kansas City Sports and Fitness Show, the show that complements Kansas City Sports and Fitness Magazine. I am Steve Fish. Now, this show is being taped at Mafia Pizzeria Southside, located at Metcalf and 127th, where at lunchtime you can enjoy the Mafia meal on the go. You can get a 10-inch one-topping pizza, 
I had a 20-ounce Pepsi product for just $5.99. You can add a garden salad for $1.99 and a giant cookie for just $0.99. Cents. Now, this offer is also good at Mafia Mike's Pizza, which is located at 87th and Lackman. Now, in our current issue of Kansas City Sports and Fitness, check out the U.S. Army High School Top Performers section. This month, we honor Bishop Miege Boys soccer coach Joe Huppy for their state championship plus goaltender Alex Lutz for his record 11 shutouts. We also honor future soldier Jonathan Thompson who played on the Liberty North football team. You can pick up your copy of KC Sports and Fitness at over 700 locations including right here at Mafia Pizzeria Southside. Also you can pick it up at Old Shawnee Pizza, Eagles Landing Golf Course, both Minsky's on Berry Road and the Kansas City Ice Center. And in the upcoming weeks on Good Sports, later on in January, we'll be back at the Kansas City Ice Center. The KCI Center is located two miles west of 435 on Johnson Drive. And also in January, we will be at Mafia Pizzeria Southside, located at 127th and Metcalf. Now on January 4th, we'll be at a new location, Gambino's Pizza, located on Brigade, just east of 435 off 87th Street in Lenexa. Uh, So come on out and join us, and you might see yourself on TV. I also want to let you know that you can view Good Sports on YouTube. All you have to do is search for the Good Sports KC channel. Now joining us are uh, two members of the uh, Heart of America Havoc. It is a professional women's volleyball team here in Kansas City. One is the coach. Uh, Her name is Jill Stinson. The other one is Victoria Henson, and she is one of the players on the team. Welcome to the show, guys. I appreciate you coming out here today. Thank you. Um, let's start off with just a little bit of information on uh, the team. Uh, it's been around for a season. Jill, this is your second year uh, coaching the team, correct? Right, that's correct. So, so you have a number of players that are coming back from last year's team, including our guest, uh, Victoria, here today. Right. Right. Almost half uh, are, are coming back this season. So, so your first event, you play a couple of uh, uh, matches out of town to start off. But your first event is in April. Uh, what will that be? When is it? You know, it's April fifth and sixth. Uh, it'll be at Bartle Hall. It's the our Heart of America Show Me Qualifier. So, along with our team, will be clubs from all across the country, high school clubs and junior high clubs. Oh, okay. That are okay. We w- they'll be uh, having their own tournament, and uh, we'll have a host uh, kind of a signature court that we'll play our matches on. I understand that's an, a sight to see with all the courts that are out there. Your general manager, uh, Kristen Rhodes, told me about that, and it just goes on and on and on and it's on. A, it's an amazing sight and an amazing level of volleyball, all the way from 11-year-olds up to um, 18-year-olds. Now, you have a tryout that's coming up um, in just a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, Victoria, did you have to do a tryout, or were you invited on the team last year? I tried out just like good for you. Else. Yeah. Was what great. was the experience like? Um, I loved it. Um, I just moved back here, so it was nice to meet all of the girls who are around here playing volleyball and make some connections there. But it was really competitive. A lot of girls showed up. It was fun. So when is the tryout, Jill? And what are you looking for? Well, January the fourth, uh, from six to nine at the the. The Davies Volleyball Complex there at, uh, off of 548 South Coy in Kansas City, Kansas. Um, you know, we return, all of our setters are not returning this year, so okay. we definitely are looking at setters. Uh, definitely need to fill an outside, like a, a, a middle position, uh, and a right side. Uh, so almost, almost all positions we'll be looking at. There you go. She's put the word out. You, uh, ladies that are out there that uh, that can bring the game should bring the game out on, on that particular day. And then you have an appearance scheduled also in January. When is that? Where is that? That is January the 18th. Um, the Heart of America hosts a, a, a little bit smaller tournament um, at, down again, once again, at Bartle Hall. And we'll be there uh, signing autographs and um, talking to the girls. And, uh, you know, I think last year we even helped call lines on some of the courts, <laughs> just trying to get around and, uh, and let everybody know that we're here and that we'd love for them to, to come and watch us play. Victoria, uh, now that you're a professional out there and you have the younger girls that, that see you in action but also come to, to not only to watch you play but, you know, that you're, you're um, communicating with them and signing autographs and things like that, is it, what kind of special experience is that for you? Um, it's really great. I mean, when I was younger, I was looked up to those girls who are older than me and playing. I'm Lindsay, one of the girls on the team. She was one of the coaches when I was starting oh, really? the club. Oh, so, really? Um, <laughs> 
being able to play with her, it just reminds me of, oh, like I looked up to you all this time. And so it's really nice. And I try to be the same way when I see other girls. So That's awesome. And you both are actually coaching at um, Jill at the collegiate level. Victoria, you're coaching at the high school level. Is that correct now? Correct. So which, which high school are you coaching for? Um, I was just at Leavenworth High School last year, helping okay. out there, which was kind of nice to be back home because that's where I went to school. So. I got you. So how'd the team do? Um, they did really well. Um, it's state. all because of you, right? Yes, of course. Well, <laughs> um, great coaches there. The girls are really great. Um, a lot of them played club, which was really nice to work with them. So. Same coach that you had when you played there, or is it a different coach? It's a different coach. Oh, okay. So, so the the person that brought you to the level that allowed you to go to Iowa State, uh, somebody you're working with somebody else now. Yes. But I'm sure that that was a plus as well to be able to talk to these girls and you know show them that they can get an education and, and all that kind of stuff. Yes, it was. It was great. Yeah. So, and, and Jill, you're you're you have a tremendous background with all sorts of accolades, uh, and you've been involved in coaching and playing for a long, long time. Uh, you're working with the Johnson County Community College team, and you have for a number of years. Uh, when is their season, and how, uh, you know, how'd they do in the last season, or how are they doing? Well, I, I am no longer coaching them. Oh, okay. But, okay, know, sorry. I get in the gym with them once in a while. My former assistant coach is the head coach, so I'll, I'll get in and, and knock it around. They actually had a great year. They finished third uh, in the nation at the national tournament, uh, and are, are really going strong. I told her she couldn't drop the baton. So <laughs> they're going strong and had a great year. Well, uh, I appreciate you guys both coming out and joining us today. Uh, that actually will do it for our show today. My thanks to our host for the show, Andy from Mafia Pizzeria Southside, and our guests, Bob Akers from the Surplus Exchange, uh, Victoria Henson and Jill Stinson from the Heart of America Havoc. People should go check them out. Uh, they start playing in 2014. They are a pro women's volleyball team representing Kansas City. Be sure to join me, Steve Fish, again next week at the same time for Good Sports, the KC Sports and Fitness Show. And check out some of our other shows on YouTube. Search for the Good Sports KC channel. So until next week, be sure to read all about sports, health, and exercise in KC Sports and Fitness Magazine. You'll find it all over Kansas City, and it's free. So pick it up today. Bring basketball fever to your own backyard or driveway with your very own game court from Sport Court of Kansas City. Let Sport Court come and install a basketball game court at your home. Game courts can also be installed for volleyball, racket sports, soccer, tennis, or roller hockey. So sink that basket at the buzzer and have your own Final Four at home in your backyard or driveway Sport Court. For more details, call Sport Court at 913-963-7529 or visit sportcourtkc.com. When it's trophy time or time to present an award or medal or a gift, contact Overland Park Awards. Need an idea for a trophy? We did for the Army High School Coach of the Week Award, and we found it at Overland Park Awards. Come visit their showroom at 7514 Floyd, one block west of Metcalf and 75th, or go online to opawards.com, or call Terry at 913-649-3635. At Overland Park Awards, they sweat the small stuff, so you don't have to. Discover, shop, and win at Cargo Largo. Stop by at 35th and Nolan Road in Independence and go online at CargoLargo.com. Cargo Largo, a retail store, and so much more. Welcome to Old Shawnee Pizza and Italian Kitchen. Yep, there's nothing like the homemade taste of an Old Shawnee Pizza. Dine in or carry out. Old Shawnee Pizza with three locations. Hi, it's the Ball Game co-host, Greg Pryor. In 1991, I was introduced to a line of health supplements called Designer Foods that were created by a genius, Dirk Pearson and his wife, Sandy Shaw. Dirk and Sandy wrote the New York Times bestseller, Life Extension, A Practical Scientific Approach. The results that I felt on a few other designer food formulas was so great that I formed a company, Life Priority, to offer these great formulas to everyone. One of my favorite products in Life Priority is called Lift. Lift is a powdered drink mix that you mix and drink when you have mental fatigue, and you want to feel bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I felt the results in about 30 minutes. I wish that I had Lyft to use when I was an infielder in Major League Baseball for the Royals. Lyft also comes in capsules called Lyft Caps. See Lyft and Lyft Caps and all the great Life Priority products at my website, lifepriority.com. Get your personal rally going. Visit my website, get some Lyft or Lyft Caps today at lifepriority.com. 
With the current trend to live a greener lifestyle, many people and businesses now recycle their electronics. At the Surplus Exchange, your e-waste will never go to a landfill or incinerator, nor will we allow e-waste to be shipped overseas. Some companies employ this tactic and end up polluting other countries with our waste. All materials are safely tracked, destroyed, or reclaimed right here in the U.S. The Surplus Exchange is Kansas City's link between industry, charity, and the environment. To find out more, visit surplusexchange.org. Now you can view our shows and past shows on YouTube. Search for the Good Sports KC channel.